Welcome to the seventh of nine videos in our course Pro Video Editing with an iPad or iPhone using LumaFusion. In the last video, we covered how to make color adjustments and add a LUT or style. We talked about adding effects, demonstrated keying and stabilizing footage, and explored the speed editor. A good video with poor audio is not a good video. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about controlling LumaFusion's audio functions. Everybody's gotta start somewhere, and that's why we've made a list, a shopping list of the nine essential things that every beginner filmmaker needs. It's really easy to get. All you have to do is click on the link in the card there or a link in the description, and you can get it today. So here we are again on the iOS homepage, and uh, we're gonna open up LumaFusion now. Now today we're talking all about audio and as we said in the intro, you can't have a video with bad audio. People just won't watch it. It's that simple. So you have to have the tools that you need to make your audio sound its best. So that's what we're gonna show you how to do here today. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about how the tracks work. Now we can have layered tracks, uh, one on top of another. And you can see here, I have a video clip and then two audio tracks. I can add more and just drag and drop. So let's go down to sound effects here. I am in story blocks within LumaFusion and I'm just gonna grab this whip whoosh and I'm going to place it down here and you can see it's loading in and now it's there. I can play it for us. Here we have, and I'll show you a little bit more of that video. That's a little tease. All right, so that's awesome. We can have multiple tracks, we can stack them, we can do everything like that, but how do we control them, right? So the first thing is you wanna be able to control its volume. So the first way you can do that is by going over to the bottom left of the screen and you see the audio meters and you tap on that. Now you have the audio meters and this is gonna allow you to turn up and down each individual channel. So if I wanted to turn down my music, which is right here, I can turn it down. Let's go, I like to go 26, negative 26. Let's see what that sounds like. Motion happening here and you'll get to see well, that was just way too much, wasn't it? So let's try to go back to maybe negative nine. Action happening faster than you would ever see with the naked eye. All right, so that seems to sound a little bit better. That's easy to do. You can turn on and off each track, just like you can do with the video tracks. But what if I wanted to go deeper? Well, just like the video clip editor, there's an audio clip editor. So all I have to do is double tap on my clip, highlight it, double tap and now it brings it in here. Now I can watch it and actually see the video at the same time. So now let's go over to configuration. And what this allows you to do is either fill the left or fill the right. Sometimes if you're only tracking to one channel, if you comes in stereo, you have to fill one or the other, or you can tell it that it's a stereo file. Now this is a stereo file, so we could do that. What's really nice is you can have auto ducking on. And what this will do is turn down the music when say a narrator or some other track turns on. Under that is the gain control, and this allows you to boost the channel, and you can keyframe this. So, so if we come down and tap on the triple circle with the plus in it, the bottom left hand of the screen, it then will put a keyframe in there. I can then move further down the line and add another keyframe, and maybe I turn up the volume, and now I have a gradual fade up from one volume to the next. Now I'm gonna undo that. That's just up here at the top of the screen, and you can undo and redo, which is nice. But you can see just below that is Pan. And now you can see, actually just wanted to point out, you see the little keyframe right next to gain? That now says there's a keyframe on it, just so you know for quick access that some adjustment was made there. So next we can change the panning, which is super helpful when you're doing dialogue and you want the sound to be coming from one side or the other, it's gonna really immerse your viewer by being able to do that. So you can pan one of your inputs to that, or for whatever reason you wanna pan. And again, you can also keyframe that. And then last is the graphic equalizer that's right here. And this allows you to have all sorts of adjustments to your track. I can really make some really dramatic <laughs> modification to the graphic EQ of whatever sound source you're working on. Now I'm gonna undo that because that's just silly. I did undo a bunch of times, but I also could have come over here and tapped on the undo right next to the graphic equalizer. So I'm going to hide that again. And we can now go up to the different offerings that are on the top right hand of the screen. If I press the question mark, it'll show us what everything is. Now let's go to distortion. And this gives us the ability to distort, pitch change, or add a delay. You're never gonna know what you need, so it's always nice to have that in your back pocket. Uh, we could go to the next, which is, these are preset graphic EQs and 
like high shelf and low pass filter. These are really helpful if you're doing just dialogue and you don't want a low rumble on it. You can really get rid of all the lows. Or if you're doing something that has a lot of lows and you don't want a high, you can put those filters on there. But as well, you can have a band pass filter, which allows you to take both the highs and lows down and even down to a parametric EQ if you so need it. Moving on next, we're gonna get over to the plugins. Now, this is really an interesting thing here. With LumaFusion, you're gonna be able to add third-party plugins to your toolbox. And it's really easy to find them. They're just AUV3 apps. And I'll show you by opening up the App Store. I already searched that, AUV3. And you can see there's just lots of options here. And these are the ones that are coming up so far are all free. So you can play around with them and see what they do if you so need them. Now, going back to LumaFusion, I'm gonna go back to our main timeline, something that's really special with LumaFusion and really helpful on the go. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my timeline and you heard a voiceover that was there. What if I told you I recorded that within the program? So let's listen to it. Here we have some amazing slow motion happening here and you'll get to see action happening faster than you would ever see with the naked eye. Seeing the heat pop these balloons and seeing all those flames going right through it. This is really the power of shooting at a high frame rate with your camera. Now that was really easy to do, and let me show you how. So we're gonna go back to our, our beginning and I'm gonna get rid of this voiceover. Now I'm gonna press the plus button and you can see that I can add a voiceover. So when I tap on that, it brings up this menu here and you can see it's moving to my voice. Now I can go over to these three dots on the bottom left and change the input gain. I can also change the sample rate and if it's stereo or mono. And now you have this bar on the bottom of the screen that if you press the circle, it'll start recording. What it does is it does a countdown for you and then you're able to record right onto track. And let's give it a try. So we're testing out our microphone on the iPad to see how it sounds compared to having a dedicated lavalier on me. But I'm talking over the slow motion of these balloons being popped by fire, and it's just really interesting and a very good use of slow motion. So now we can come over here, and once I like what I did, I can press the green plus, or I can press the play to listen to it. So let's listen to it back. So we're testing out our microphone on the iPad to see how it sounds compared to having a dedicated lavalier on me. But I'm talking over the slow motion of these balloons being popped by fire, and it's just really interesting and a very good use of slow motion. So I like that. It sounded actually pretty good other than the room echo I have. Let me press the green square with the check mark in it. And now it's right there. The nice thing here is if we did like say a dynamics processor, just double tap on it and it shows up right here on the bottom. And I'm able to then change how the compression is working on the voice if I wanted to make it say sound like a really thick broadcast voice. No matter what you do, always be making sure your audio is not distracting and doesn't take away from your video. No matter how many beautiful images you capture, having bad audio will always distract from it. In the next video, we'll learn that there's more to communicating with video than what is composed in the video frame. We'll cover how you can create smooth titles and graphics in LumaFusion. Take this information and challenge yourself to use it today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to get your shopping list of the nine essential things every filmmaker needs. Link in the card or in the description.